Hi everybody, my name is Barbara Lester and I'm going to be talking to you today about mindfulness-based stress reduction. And I'll probably refer to that as MBSR because it's a little easier to say. And mindfulness-based stress reduction is a course that I teach and today's video is designed to give you a bit of a taste of it, an overview of some of the program guidelines and to hopefully answer questions you might have about how a MBSR class might go. And I want to do that. I want to start out by giving you a little taste of what mindfulness is before we actually talk about what mindfulness is. And then, as I said, I'll also be going through some different program guidelines and that kind of thing. So welcome to my video today. And let's start off with a brief guided meditation. And so to do that, I would invite you to sit up straight in wherever you are, if you're sitting in a chair or on the couch, or as I am on a meditation cushion, is to sit up straight so that you can access your breathing. And if you're sitting in a chair or some other thing along those lines, not on a meditation cushion, you could put your feet on the floor just to create a more grounded posture. And you may also uh, close your eyes if you'd like. There's no requirement to close your eyes, but if you do keep them open, I suggest that you look downwards and just softening your gaze so that you're not looking at anything in particular, including me right at this moment for the meditation part. Uh, and I'll lead you in a brief practice. So let's begin by first just settling into that erect and upright posture. And if you'd like to just briefly scan your body and notice any obvious areas of tension, tightness, if you'd like, you can try and release those or breathe into those. But you can settle into an upright posture without too much discomfort, releasing any obvious areas of tension, so as we feel it in the jaw or the shoulders or the back. And you might think about and notice that there are things that you've got with you in this moment that perhaps you don't need. You might have your to-do list rattling around in your mind or things that happened earlier today that are popping in and out of your awareness. And it can be helpful to think of putting those aside for this time. To know that they'll, if you want to pick them up later, you can. But you can set them aside and it's to be fully present in this moment. This mindfulness is an idea of present moment of awareness, being non judgmental, being awake to this exact moment rather than distracted by thoughts about the past or the future. We're going to focus our awareness right now on the sensation of the breath. So noticing the breath entering and leaving the body. And you might notice it in the sensations around the nose as the air enters and leaves the nostrils. Or your focus might be drawn more to the rising and falling of the chest. Or the rising and falling of the abdomen. And there's no right place or wrong place. Just notice where for you, you most notice those sensations at this present moment. And gently rest your awareness there. 
And there's so many other things that I can call out for our attention. There might be noises, thoughts, physical sensations other than the breath, emotions. The magic moment, as Sharon Salzberg calls it, in any meditation strategy is just that when you notice your awareness has gone off to one of those other topics, that you just bring it back to whatever you're choosing to focus on in the present moment. And right now, we're choosing to focus on the sensation of the breath coming and going. And that wandering mind greets you by pulling your attention off. You just gently escort your awareness back to the breath. And that generally happens over and over. Our thoughts are not our enemies. It's not that one isn't not doing a good job at the practice if your mind wanders off. It's just the natural human brain at work. And we're just returning our awareness again and again back to the breath. This present breath, this exact breath. In, out. All the pauses between the in-breath Noticing this breath. Observing. With curiosity, you know, what is this breath like? And with a heartfulness, you know, we're embracing who we are at this moment. breath is like at this moment. Be mindful and heartful of our present moment of awareness. Now you just might want to take a, another moment and reflect on what that experience was like for you. What did you notice about that exact experience? Not about other times that you've tried this kind of practice, but what was that practice like for you? What did you notice? And if you care to, in the course of this video, in any of these moments when you reflect on things, you can always Pause the video for a moment and make a journal note about what that experience was like. And we're going to move on to talking about some of the specifics of mindfulness-based stress reduction. And so I think we most of us know what stress is, although we will be talking about that in quite a bit of detail in this course. Uh, but we have a lot of experiences of stress, and the goal of this program is to help use different mindfulness practices to change our automatic pilot reactions to stress. And so we work on becoming aware of what our own stress reactions are, 
the things that might be unique to us as well as just common to the human condition. And then also thinking about ways we can mediate some of those responses with mindfulness practices. And the details of MBSR is this is an eight week program and the class meets for two and a half hours at a time. So once a week for two and a half hours for eight weeks. And then there's also between, usually between about the sixth and seventh week, or it could vary just a little bit, uh, there is a half day retreat of about six hours, on a, generally on a Saturday, where we also get together to work on these practices. So we have these eight classes, in a, generally on an evening, about two and a half hours, and then a half day retreat on a Saturday where uh, we also work on the practices. And I think of the program as being divided up into the first three weeks being really learning a number of different practices, of uh, mindfulness practices, different meditation strategies. And then the th second three weeks is we're really practicing the practices more intensely. Um, and then the last two weeks of the program is thinking about how to, to take these practices into our ongoing lives. And it's a very experiential program, although there'll be some instruction and there'll also be some discussion of what our experiences are like, uh, the majority of the program is focusing on practicing the, the things that we learn. Uh, and that'll be taking place both in the class itself, in the retreat itself, as well as in your day today experience throughout those eight weeks. And so let me tell you a little bit more about it. And one is in addition to coming to the class for two and a half hours a week, part of the program is doing home practice um, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes each day, or we usually say at least six days a week. And then you're coming to the class too. So uh, it's something where we really want you to be ready to uh, practice these things each day uh, and even when you don't feel like it. So rather than thinking, well, if I feel like it, I'll practice. And sometimes that often ends up that people just practice once or twice, you know, during the week rather than on a regular basis. And so we really want to encourage you that if you think you want to take this program, that you feel ready to think about how could you make that kind of practice time work for you in your day-to-day -day life. Because that's what you really when you really experience how this may help you. And something I want to say about MBSR, which I haven't referred to yet, is there's a lot of research. This is a program that's been around for over 30 years. It was developed by John Kabat-Zinn uh, and at the UMass Medical Center. Uh, and it's if people take MBSR, this Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, it's something that is similar everywhere you would take it. It's taught all over the world. Uh, and the teachers, like myself, have gone through a specific training program to teach the course in a very particular way. And so there's been a lot of research about how this program can help people with many different kinds of uh, issues that might bring them to the program. Uh, and this, it, if you're interested in learning more about the research that supports MBSR, you know, I refer you to you know, some of the sources that cover those research studies, which would include, I give my teacher qualification through the UC San Diego Center for Mindfulness, and they have on their website uh, a list of some of the research articles that support it. And those are also available at the um, UMass um, Center for Mindfulness, um, as well as if you just went to say Google Scholar or something like that, you could Google for some of the research articles that support the effectiveness of mindfulness-based stress reduction in terms of making changes in people's lives. Uh, and another great resource is this book called Full Catastrophe Living. This is the uh, book where John Kabat-Zinn really talks about um, mindfulness-based stress reduction. It's called Full Catastrophe Living, Using the Wisdom of Your Body and Mind to Face Stress, Pain, and Illness. Um, it was updated in 2013, and so if you are going to read it, I do recommend that newer edition because it uh, covers a lot of the um, updated research. 
Um, and it is quite thick, but it's for someone like me, uh, sort of a geek on some of these topics, I found it quite an easy read uh, and, and a wonderful book. Um, I will say, if you're thinking about taking the course, though, that I do recommend that you either, if you are going to read it, to either read it before or after the program as opposed to during, because if you're going to be spending a bunch of time during those eight weeks working on mindfulness, we would encourage you to be practicing the skills rather than reading about it, to experience it rather than just be in your head about it. Uh, and it's a great resource and something you'd consider if you're considering taking um, MBSR. It'll give you a lot of information about uh, how it can be helpful to you and give a lot of exp um, descriptions of the sort of physiology of stress and how as human beings we react to things like uh, and so when we're thinking about that home practice, <laughs> so let me get back to that part, uh, because that's a very important part of the program. And I think of it, you know, when you think of say, something like Weight Watchers, right? The idea of when you go to Weight Watchers is that you would go to the group and you would talk about different stresses, different obstacles that you might be facing in your journey. And then you would be trying to practice the skill during the week of changing your eating habits. And MBSR is similar to that in that we do have a group where we teach skills that will be um, that are part of the program and then the idea is you practice those skills during the week and I also encourage you to reflect on those things that you do whether you like it or not because uh, we all might have habits that are good for us some of which we do only when we feel like it uh, and some of which we do very regularly whether we feel like it or not so sometimes when I have this discussion in the group we might talk about Many of us might brush our teeth every day, whether we feel like it or not. You know, we may know what's good for us. We have all these reasons that we would do it. So even if we're tired or um, not feeling that great, maybe we still do it regardless because of those benefits that we might get from it. Uh, and there might be other habits uh, that we only do when we feel like it. You know, like we think, well, some people are saying that that's true for their body exercise, you know, so it might be like, oh, I'll exercise if I feel like it, and then they may or may not feel like it. So we do encourage that during MBSR that you work on setting up a plan for yourself to make time for the home practices, and that you do it on almost every day of the week, whether you feel like it or not, in order to really fully learn how this, um, these practices may be helpful to you in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, so let me talk about some of the other things about MBSR. Um, and when, when we are talking about those home practices, there'll be both what we call formal practices, which is when you say sit down and have a meditation session of one kind or another. And there'll be plenty of guidance about how to do that and things that you can listen to to guide you through those practices. So you won't be just on your own, um, you know, it, truly, because you'll have some guidance and help about how to do those things. Uh, and there'll also be what we call informal practices where you try to bring that mindful moment to moment, non-judgmental awareness to other things like brushing your teeth or washing the dishes or um, different data, things of our day-to-day -day lives that uh, we experience and trying to be fully present in that experience rather than uh, you know, thinking about a million other things while we're washing the dishes or while we're brushing our teeth, but really just experiencing and noticing that moment. Uh, so there'll be those kinds of assignments each week that you would have. Uh, and so let me just talk about, as I said, some of the specifics. So one is that we ask for people who are participating in this program, there'll be other people there with you. So we ask that we maintain confidentiality about the things that other people say in the class. And that means, of course, if you're sharing with friends or family members, you can certainly talk about your experience of the class or what the instruction is like and things like that. But we ask that you not share, you know, personal things that other people in the class may choose to share with the group. Uh, we also uh, have a focus on the actual experiences that we're having, um, both during our home practice sessions as well as during the class itself. Uh, and, and that we ask people to speak from that experience when we're sharing in the group uh, and to uh, not so much share in the group advice that we might have for other people. So we ask people to refrain from giving advice to others um, and to focus on sharing your own personal 
experience of these practices and the ones that have occurred either in the class itself or during the week rather than things that maybe you did a few years ago or last couple months ago so that we're I'm going to help you keep your focus on the present experiences and I'm not giving advice to other people but really just being there for them because it's a great gift we can offer people is our attention and our awareness um, to what they're currently experiencing and believe and to work on believing that they can find those answers within themselves about where they want to go with these things rather than um, us giving telling them how we think they should be proceeding in their lives uh, let's see there's um, also one of the specifics about the class is that um, when you'll be getting the information if you decide to sign up for it about the beginning and end time of the class. So I will always begin right on time um, and end right on time if it's under my control to do so. Um, I mean, I won't go over. Occasionally I might end a little bit early, but I won't go over a lot of time. And I will start right on time, even if everyone's not there. So we ask you to do your best to get there on time. Um, but things come up, things happen. You may come in late. And if so, just join the group in progress. But I will start and end as much as I can under my own control um, in terms of uh, how the class is structured. And I also don't take a break unless, you know, I might need to run out to the restroom or something like that. But I don't take formal breaks in the class where we say, okay, now we're going to have a 10 minute break and then we'll come back in 10 minutes. I always just run through the entire time. Um, and so that if you need to step out, use the restroom, uh, if an urgent call comes in that needs your attention and can't wait because, you know, work with a lot of uh, healthcare providers and parents and, you know, people who may have to respond to a call. Um, and if you do, we just ask that you step out and take that and then rejoin us as you can. Um, if you do have to stay on call like that, of course, if you don't have to stay on call, it's great if you could just silence and put your phones away and not have that distraction. If that's not possible, um, we keep, please keep your phone on silent. And then if you need to take something, just to step out and, and then rejoin us as soon as you can. Um, uh, so that it's just to minimize the distraction towards other people. Uh, there's a few situations in the class um, that we would consider, um, well, maybe instead of situations, it might be better to say a few uh, kinds of things that people might be going through that might make it so that MBSR isn't the best fit for you right now. Uh, and so that would be things along the lines of if someone has had a significant substance abuse problem and has had less than a year of sobriety, that it's nice we found that that's not the best time to take the class. Um, if someone's been going through very major life changes um, or having um, sort of severe depression or anxiety uh, or unresolved trauma or continuing to struggle with thoughts of, have had suicidal thoughts and are continuing to struggle with that, those are some times when it may not be the best time to take MBSR. And if those things are true for you, you could, could certainly be consulting with your doctor or your therapist about their recommendation about that or contact the instructor. In this case, if I'm your instructor, you know, you can contact me to see whether what our thoughts would be about whether this would be a good time for you to take the class or not. And if someone is in treatment with a therapist, um, we also ask that the... Um, individual sign a release of information so that if something does come up in the program that I think that um, we should coordinate with your therapist that I would already have their permission in order to do that. Uh, so any questions about that, please feel free to contact me if I'm your instructor for the class. Um, and also um, there's also some movement practices in the class as part of the um, program. They're based on yoga traditions and they're these body awareness practices that we do. Um, and for some people, um, it may not be right for them to engage in certain movement practices. And that's another thing if you had any questions about, you could talk to your doctor about. And we also let people know that during those practices that uh, to listen to the advice of both you know, people who may be telling you what you can and can't do with your um, body, you know, like a physical therapist or a doctor, as well as listening to your own body in terms of I might be giving instruction to do a certain movement, 
But if you know that that isn't the right movement for you, then you just either follow along in your imagination or you stand or sit during that practice. Um, and that that would override my instruction about that because I'm not a doctor or a physical therapist and I um, won't uh, be able to assess if that particular movement is right for you. Uh, so you'll need to listen to your own body and to the advice of any professionals that are advising you regarding uh, movement practices. Um, there might be occasions when I am recording in the program uh, myself. That's the goal is not to record you, but to record me uh, because of um, the, the way that MBSR works is that we are very much trying to keep a consistent program um, and I'm a qualified teacher. Uh, and we sometimes there's occasions when um, we may record sessions of the class and uh, I have people sign a consent for that recording. But as I said, the focus is on me to be evaluating myself rather than to be sharing anything that uh, you're doing. Uh, and that would only be shared with uh, a, a senior MBSR instructor, not with an, uh, anyone else. Uh, and I also remind people that um, if, if the class is something where you're taking a class with other people that you work with, and if someone is your supervisor, if there are any authority issues like that within the class, that there's going to be times when we break up into dyads and share. And in those situations, I ask that you do that with someone else rather than someone who's your direct uh, supervisor, if that happens to come up. Um, and also just to speak with me if there's any concerns, if it has come to your awareness that there's someone in the class where there's any supervision or authority um, differences uh, in amongst the participants, and we can discuss how to best manage that. And we do ask in the class, you'll never be required to speak in the larger group. There's opportunities to speak in the larger group, but that's not a requirement to participate in the program. However, we do ask that if you choose to take the class, that you be willing to speak in dyads or small groups. That would be, you know, with one other person or with two or three others, um, that you have that willingness to share some of your experience because we do have a number, many different opportunities throughout the program to share in small groups. And then the larger group discussion piece uh, will be um, optional for, uh, for each participant. Uh, and we also ask because, um, you know, we form a group together that if it turns out that um, you're gonna miss a class, uh, you know, that you let me know and I'll be letting you know how to do that so that I can let other people, or, you know, so-and-so isn't going to be here tonight because they had to work or, you know, they just can't make it, something like that. Because sometimes other people worry that they've said or done the wrong thing and that that's why someone isn't coming back. And so it's nice to be able to just let people know, hey, I heard from John, he can't make it tonight. This is, you know, something came up for him. Uh, and I'll be letting you know how to do that. And uh, we do ask that you not enroll in the program if you don't think that you can make it to most of the classes. And that includes that half-day retreat. That's not an optional part of the program. That's a uh, important part of the program. And so if you think you're going to miss the first class or basically more than two of the classes throughout this series, we ask that you take it another time. Uh, because uh, there's just so many different things that we cover in the program. We don't want you to uh, miss out. And we also want to keep that group experience going. Uh, we, I also like to tell people that you can take MBSR um, if you have any religion or if you have no religion. This is not the thing, nothing is taught that is contradictory to people's religious faith. And although some of these practices do come from um, certain religious traditions, and specifically from Buddhism, which has a long meditation uh, practice history. Uh, the way that it is used in mindfulness-based stress reduction is secular. It's not based on uh, spiritual and religious um, uh, beliefs, and it's something that can be practiced by people of all faiths and, uh, or of no faith. So that's not a you know, requirement to have a certain religious or spiritual viewpoint. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to make sure that we mention? 
Um, oh, let me talk about what you should bring to class. I suggest that you bring water um, and also uh, not to bring food. So unless you're medically um, required to have food at you know, certain intervals or need to have food available to you for um, you know, a health reason, uh, then we ask that you not eat during this time. And so please plan your evening meal to either be before or after class and not to eat during class, if you would. Uh, and, and not to bring snacks and things like that, again, unless that's a specific need for a particular health requirement. Uh, we also ask, just try, try to reduce or avoid any use of scented products in the class because we will be doing movement practices and sitting near each other. And you know, for some people that's uncomfortable or distraction for them. Uh, we also suggest that you watch your own tendencies. So for instance, if you know you're someone who always speaks up, you know, whenever there's an opportunity to speak up, try to become mindful of that and observe that, what that's like for you and for others. And perhaps hold back a little more um, at times. And if your tendency is to almost never speak up or not very often, you might want to watch that also. Become mindful of what that's like for you and for others. And maybe try and encourage yourself to uh, speak up a little more. You know, so just for all of us, we need to watch our own tendencies and you know, see um, how we might want to work on those um, in the class itself. Uh, and um, what else do I like to tell people? Okay, what you should bring with you. Uh, so uh, we will be doing some practices where uh, we're doing some movement practices um, on the floor, both standing on the floor as well as laying down and sitting on the floor. So I suggest that people bring a yoga mat is usually the easiest to do that, although I have had some people just bring a blanket. Uh, so if you don't have a yoga mat and you don't, um, want to get one or don't have the means to get one, then you know you could uh, bring a, a blanket. Would work for most people. It's just not. It's a little slipperier um, than a, a yoga mat. So if possible, I'd suggest a yoga mat. You could bring a meditation cushion if you like to use them or want to try using them, um, but it's definitely not a requirement. All of the sitting meditation practices can be done in a chair. In fact, they can be done standing up or even laying down, uh, but it doesn't have to be done sitting on a meditation cushion. Now, some people like to try those, um, or do they have ones already and they'd like to bring those, and you're certainly welcome to do that, but it's not a requirement of any kind. Um, and in fact, I generally suggest that if people are going to bring a meditation cushion, you really don't need to bother until about the uh, third week. I'll let you know. That's when we start doing a little bit longer of the sitting practice. Um, so this is where it might be worth lugging it around to bring it to class. Um, I also, we do some practices that involve laying on the floor, which again, you might be laying on a yoga mat, um, but it, we, where someone's laying there for a while while we're doing a certain type of um, body practice, um, and people sometimes feel cold. Um, and so I do suggest if there's, unless you're someone who just never gets cold at all, that you br maybe bring a blanket so that you can cover yourself during that time. Um, because laying on the floor for a period of time like that often makes people feel uncomfortable. And also some people like to bring a, a pillow or two. So because we are going to be laying on the floor again, again, if that works for your body, there's never a requirement to lay on the floor. And I'll give you some different options when the class time comes. But some people find they need to have a small pillow under their head. Or when they're laying on the floor, they also might need to put a pillow under their knees. And so you might just want to practice at home. If you're laying on the floor, what do you need? You know, do you need a little pillow under your head or something under your knees or anything like that? And, and you'll learn pretty quickly in the first class, you know, what you might need. But if you want to be the most comfortable during the first class, uh, you might want to bring, um, for sure, a yoga mat and a blanket if that's um, something uh, uh, that you have available to you. And then... Uh, uh, consider, you know, a small pillow or two if you think you might need that. Let's see. I think that I have covered most of the things that I want to cover. Something I'd like to ask you to consider, and this is something you might want to journal about too, is what do you think would get in the way of doing this kind of practice each day? What would be, get in the way of coming to class? What might get in the way of trying to create a time for these um, mindfulness meditation practices um, and what's going to support it. 
what, what, how can you set things up so that it might be supportive, um, um, you know, for you to do that. Uh, and so you might want to pause for a moment, maybe make a note in a journal about that or reflect on that because uh, that's often quite a change in our day-to-day -day lives to think about how to go to a class that takes that much time, how to set up a home practice time, and even how to set up space in our living situation, you know, so that we have a quiet spot perhaps that uh, where we can do a practice or where, you know, the kids aren't going to be coming in every couple minutes or, you know, um, you know, I, I know certainly I've had times in my life where I'm trying to go to the bathroom and, you know, kids are putting their hands under the door, you know, whatever. You know, and sometimes we want to think about ways we can set things up so that that's not so much of a problem. Um, uh, so there may be a few other things that we um, talk about in terms of the general orientation to um MBSR, but I think those are the main things that I want to cover in this orientation. And so thank you for all this time that you've taken to watch this. And uh, if you think MBSR is for you, then you um, will have been in the link that you got for this video. Uh, there would be also some instructions about how to go ahead to uh, sign up for class. And if you do end up taking class with me, I'll be very happy to get to meet you and to share this journey and experience with you uh, and to see how working on your patterns of reactivity to stress and finding some new ways to approach that, how that may be uh, meaningful to you. And I would love to share that uh, journey with you if we get the opportunity to do that. So thank you for joining me today, and I wish you...